quite a few sections there. She could do a review post test. I see that just from scrolling down, it says something like this. They want to know the equation of this line. And, of course, I don't have mine on the block like they have on theirs. Is everybody on that section? When you say table contents? <laughs> It's under the lessons. It's called uh, course documents. Yeah. And go go to the uh, <coughs> review chapter. Convert like the first review chapter, and then go down where it says review chapter post test down towards the bottom. Click on that one. You should have a post test come up. You see it? Anybody not see it? Anybody? Everybody on it? Yeah. Go, go, down, go down and click on that review chapter and post test. It'll, it'll say begin. Just go ahead and begin now. I can, I can okay. reset them. It says unlimited um, number of attempts. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Set the way. What's up with the key? You want the key again? Yeah. Up here. Right here. Right there. Right down here. See that right here? Oh, yeah. Just put your key in there. Scroll down where it's gave you graph. Do you know how to do that problem real quickly? You know the end number has to be a minus three, right? You know it has to be either this one. It can't be it can't be this one because the line would go this way. So it's either this one or which one? It has to be a positive, it has to be this one or this one. So then you say what? It's rise over run. It is what? You go up to over one. So it has to be what? It has to be C. Does everybody see that one? It has to be C two. 
It has to be 2x minus 3. Everybody there? My answer was A, not C. What? My answer was A, not C. Well, if you're going to have, it's going to scramble them, but you, it's going to be what? It's the 2x, 2x minus 3. 2x minus 3. Do you see why it's 2x minus 3? Yeah. Right. Now yours is going to, the answers will be different. Do you see why, do you see, do you see why yours is 2x minus 3? Yeah. Get, get yours over there. They haven't had it in the lab yet. i got to still purchase mine. They don't have okay. it. Okay. I will go to the bookstore now. They have them now? Huh? They have them in there now? I don't know. You go check and see. Okay. Anyway, y'all, you can start, just scroll down those problems and scroll down those problems and see if you see any that uh, the solving, uh, well, Somebody tell me what it you won't solve. I don't want to do the set. Like if I think the question was, says choose each set that the number three belongs to. I don't have it on my screen because all I see is the questions. My number seven. Number seven. Which one is seven? Because choose each nope. set that the number three belongs to. Number seven. I would not. Yeah. We all got different problems. Yeah. 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 Uh, They're in different orders. Okay, I'll fix that problem in just a second. If you all will, will uh, give me one second. Let me finish writing this down. <laughs> okay, if you all will do this for me, if you all will back out of the, if you'll back out of the problem, okay? Back out of your, uh, Okay, now um, go back into it. Go back into the to the pre-test or the post-test. And this time, all the answers and things should come up the same. All the questions, all the answers, and everything. Your first question should be uh, choose each set. Okay. So, no. Okay, back back out again. Let me see why it didn't work. Back all the way out and then go back into it. Go up, you have to go all the way back to hold. Go out of your course and then back into your course. It's what? What now? It asks us if we want to resume our previous session. We might have to submit it and then go out. And yeah, submit it. And I'll go out there and just submit it. And uh, I'm going to change it to where everybody would have the same question come up.
or for today. Doesn't really matter for today. So let's just let's just take a look at this. Can y'all find this problem by scrolling down? Scroll down and see if you can find this problem. And when you get through today, submit that whatever you've done, and I'll delete it, and then it'll it should start back over, and everybody's question will come up the same way. So. Everybody find this one. Just scroll down until you see this question. Okay. <clears throat> I, I don't think I would ever give you one like this to do because to me this is just busy work. Because I want somebody, I want somebody to definitely tell me what, what, uh, what real life problem this example fits. And I'll bet you no one could come up with one. No one. <clears throat> so this is just what I consider busy work. But what you have to do is you have to think about this a second and say, okay, they would not have put this problem up on the test or whatever unless something would factor and cancel out. So I would not work on this one first because this is the more difficult one. I would probably work on this one up here like this, knowing good and well that this one has to be x, one up has to be plus, one up has to be minus. Okay? So this has to be a y. Like that. You know that? Done. Everybody see that? Well, I can almost bet you that one of the factors down here will be one of these jokers up here. It'll be one of those. So when you do this, you know this is 2x. You know this was not one of them, because you don't see a 2x up there anywhere. But then you gotta get a three out here on the end, so it's gotta be a what? A minus three, that's x. This has to be a what? A plus one. So, Or would it be y? Well, this one, that's a minus six plus one. That's right. Is that right? Did I do it right? No. Oh, it's supposed to be a plus three. No. Both of them have to be minus. This is a plus three. That's the minus. That has to be a y. This right. Yeah. That would be right. Yeah. And look, neither one of them cancels out anyway. So maybe one of them up here will cancel out. So we got this one factored. So we look at this one over here like this. You see what I'm talking about is being busy work? One of them has to be a plus, one of them has to be a minus. So this has to be what? Like that, x plus two, so maybe one of them up here is gonna cancel out. Both of them have to be plus, then you got a what? Two and a six, right? Now you can look to see where you got a what? An x plus two. The only place I see is this one has to cancel with this one. Is that right? Yeah. X squared. That, is that all? Two. Looks to me like that's all. That's wrong. Which one's wrong? X plus 2, X minus 6, the bottom. On this the one? Left. On the left. That's Over here? Yes. Oh, it should be this, right? Yeah. Right? Should be that. That's right. So we cancel with that one. Looks to me like, oh, okay, this one will cancel. Okay, I'm sorry. That will cancel with that one. So 
we did get a couple, a couple of them to cancel out. But to me, that's just busy work of factory. That's busy work factory. When you probably need to spend all the time on giving reasons for factory. I mean, why, why learn to do all this stuff? I mean, what does that tell you? It just teaches you that, well, I know how to factor. I know how to break these things apart as best I can. Sometimes it's what? It's a guess or by gosh. What did I do this for? Well, to sort of simplify the problem somewhat, you know, what real life situation does this fit? Absolutely nothing. You cannot, no one can tell me a real life situation that that would fit. Nobody. So I would not spend a whole lot of time doing that problem. Okay? Because I don't think I'll put one like this on an exam today. If I see one like this, I'll take it off. Because it just takes up too much of your time trying to guess her by gosh. And it's a lot of times it is guess her by gosh. How about one like this? Now they call that what? A systems of equations? Does everybody see that that's a systems of equation problem? A dead mouse. Oh, Both of them are linear equations, right? Both of them are linear. How can you immediately look at it and say they are not parallel? Can you look at that problem and say those two lines are not parallel? They don't have the same slope? They don't have the same slope? Uh, and that's what it means. Yeah, but the thing about it is, what is the slope of each one of them? That means you've got to go out and find the slope, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot easier way. And what you do is you do this. So you can sort of, you almost do this mentally, just about. If you can multiply this number times this number, and then you get what? 30. 30. Does everybody see that? And you multiply this number, which is 1, times this number, which is minus 2. You change the sign, make it what? I don't care what I got. I got some number besides what? Zero. Zero. It says those lines cross each other somewhere. They are non-parallel. Those lines... Those two equations have a common solution somewhere. So as those two lines cross each other somewhere. <clears throat> Everybody see what I did to, to do that? Okay. With this problem like this, you have several options that you could use to solve this problem. 
Somebody they be what option, and we'll work on that uh, what option first. Um, multiply the top by five. The top problem by five. Everybody see what he's doing? If you multiply the top equation by five, and then add them together, you're going to do what? This will disappear. Everybody see that? This will disappear. So if you multiply the top by five, you gotta get five. Um, that was it seventy-five? Yeah. Everybody see that? So when you add these together now, if I added these two together, I get what? Um, negative thirty-two six x equals. How much? 64. X is equal to what? Minus 2. Nobody see how that easy that was? How do you get Y? Plug it in. You could just take X and put it in either one of those equations and get Y. You could put it in the original equation up here if you want to. Just put an X right here as a minus 2. This makes a 4. So if I put this 4 over here, it becomes y. So minus 5y equals y. Minus 15y is equal to y. 3. So when x, when x is minus 2 and y is 3, that magical point there is where these two lines do what? These two lines cross each other. Now, I don't know where they cross each other like this, like this, like that, you know. We, don't, we won't know until you do what? Until you graph each one of them. But you do know that that magical point right there is where they both cross each other. Now, when they cross each other at a slight angle like this, or maybe like this, or this, or this, does that make sense? All we know is that's the solution set for that system of equations. Any questions of how you went about solving the systems of equations? <clears throat> okay. Uh, somebody give me another way that you could do this problem. Yeah, as a matter of fact, you could go back to this. Let's go back to this original. What was this up here? This was what? Six? Uh, yeah. How much was this? Fifteen, was it? Mm. Was that fifteen? That's the original one? You could, in fact, <coughs> solve this equation for y. And this would be like s. It would be y is equal to... Everybody see this? Then you could do what? You could take the y value and put it right here. What method is that called? <coughs> it's called the substitution method. <coughs> You're substituting the top equation into what? To the second equation. <coughs> <coughs> oh, what's in this room? There's something in this room. The dead mouse. What the hell? The dead mouse. <coughs> <coughs> it has to be. Dang. Every day I do this.
Okay, can anybody think of a third method to solve this problem? <coughs> Anybody, can anybody think of a third way? You could sketch them. You could sketch them. Sketch the lines and just do it that way. Do what now? Sketch the graph of the lines and look where they intersect. Oh, you may graph the two of them? Sometimes that may or may not work because they may cross it well. Some gosh awful point. How many of you remember this method? Remember this method. What method is that called? Kramer. 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 Kramer's rule. Kramer's rule. Kramer's rules. And we do what? We go solve for x. So we insert. And we leave the y's alone, which is what? How do you do Kramer's rule? Who remembers how to do Kramer's rule? Yeah, you remember how to do it? I'm Anybody? Now you'll see what we did a minute ago. You remember what I showed you a minute ago? You remember what I showed you when I did this? Just a second ago? And I said, we didn't get a lot. We didn't get a zero, right? And because we didn't get a zero, they did cross. But see, if you got a zero, that would put a zero in this denominator, which is what? Undefined, it says what? Those lines are not. They do not cross each other. They have to be what? They never touch each other. They never come close to each other. So I can't remember what we got here, but we got this. We did this which is what? Nine, that's a plus 30, right? And when you multiply back this direction, always, always, always change the sign. That's a minus 2 makes it a what? So the bottom is what? A 32. Well, guess what? When you're solving for y, it would be the same of the bottom for the y also. The 32 would be the same. But on the top, you leave what? You leave the minus 6. You leave these alone, and you replace the y's with the columns in the y. Nobody see the y column? Mm -hmm. You see the x column? That's because we're solving for x. That's so we're solving for y. And we, and we do the same thing. You multiply. This times this is how much? Minus 75, right? Mm -hmm. And this times this is a minus 11 makes this y. Plus 11. Always change the sign. This times this is plus 66, and then plus 30. Does everybody see that this is plus 30? See this? Plus 30, right? So we do this arithmetic. I don't know how to do this one. Anybody do, can anybody do that? Minus 64. How about you? 64. Minus 64. See what we got over there? Got the same answer, didn't we? Mm -hmm. 
This one is going to be what? That's a 6. 96 over 32 makes what? 3. Did we get, yeah, we got the same answers. Everybody see that? So you have a, a multitude of ways of working the systems of equations. <coughs> By our race is to what? How about this over here? Yes. Can you go back over uh, solving linear inequalities? Seven x minus five one. Hey, I have more to my Number five on mine. Yeah. Where? Which one is it? Number five. Everybody okay with this so far? We're going to do this. Just put this over here. That makes what? And now this makes this what? I'll put the 5 over here, right? Everybody see that? So this says that x is less than, this is 9 divided by what? X is less than 9 divided by 13. That makes sense? Then when you divide, you flip the sign around there, right? <coughs> yeah, only if this was what? Negative. If this was negative. If you had, if you had something like this, <coughs> then this would be what? Make sense? Where where does this play a role? Where would this play a role, for example? They ask you the question, a problem like this, they're going to ask you, what is the domain of this problem? What is the domain of this problem that you're looking at on the board? Who remembers what that means? What is the domain of that problem? Yeah, in other words, what they're asking you when they say that is what numbers are you allowed to use for X? So a lot of times it's better to find out what numbers 
can't I use for X? Okay, for example, like this. What if you had this problem like this? If, so, if they ask you what is the domain of this problem, what is the domain of this problem, then I guarantee you it's going to be a lot easier to find the numbers that you were not allowed to use versus the numbers that you are allowed to use. Does that make sense? Find out what you're not allowed to use and you can quickly say, okay, what can I do with this? This can be Y. And easily you can see that you're not allowed to put a what in there for X. You cannot put a minus 3, nor are you allowed to put a positive 3. I would suggest that some of you start paying close attention because you're not. This is important. Everybody see this? Because they surely ask you to find the domain. Now, for this course, and most courses, the domain is only going to be important to you all in two situations. And that is, if you are given a rational function, what is a rational function? Somebody tell me the definition of a rational function. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think uh, we need help here. So, a rational function is, like, is a like function <laughs> that looks like a fraction. <laughs> That's called a rational function. Okay. The second time that you're going to be concerned is when you have a square root function or in other words an even root function. I won't give you a fourth root equation or a sixth root equation. I won't do that because this, this, one's, this one served its purpose as a square root. That's two. That's an even number. So that means you have to be what? Extremely careful about what? In this, you know over here you have to be what? You can't be using a zero in the denominator, ever. That is undefined. So, over here, what, why, are you, why are you concerned about this problem? Or not an even number, a um, positive number. So what would you say about that problem? X has to, X is greater than or equal to 2. Ouch. Ouch. You listen to me carefully. You should say, you're the, the discriminant in this problem, you know what the discriminant is? That's the discriminant. That's called the discriminant. <clears throat> has to be what? Positive. The discriminant has to be positive. Does that make sense? Solve that equation. That's why you need to know about what? Inequalities. You have to know what you're allowed and what you can't use. Did anybody get it work? Work it. Hurry. Did anybody get it?
get it? Let's say. Get it? You get it? You get it? You get it? Y'all not even working on this time. Y'all y'all can y'all can be this best if you want to. You get it? You get it? Y'all get it? Where's your paper pencil? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's just best for that. Yeah. Unless you want to stay. If anybody wants to stay, you're welcome to go. So. I bet you don't need to be here. So. This would be what? This would make this, this. That's called the domain of your problem. X has to be less than or equal to 2. That's pretty simple to do that. Okay, all right. How about you that know this stuff well enough that you this is I know it's boring to you, so if you like I will give you some examples of this and what does this what does this problem actually mean? that you're looking at on the board. That some of you are looking at, some of you are not paying attention at all, so that's okay, you don't have to. Please don't come to me and ask for help. <laughs> not towards the end of the semester anyway. Uh, we know that this is, this is that says that x cannot equal three or x cannot equal what? Minus 3. Now what does that mean physically for your problem? What does that mean physically for that problem right there when it says the domain is all numbers except what? Minus 3 and a positive 3. What it means you all is this. If you go out to the 3 You go out to the minus three, and you must do what? You must construct what you can think of as a brick wall. And that brick wall cannot be crossed. So this problem would look something like this. And something is going to happen in between here and here. <clears throat> What's going to happen between these two points is either going to be something like this, or it could be something like a U, or it could be something like what? Like an S-shaped thing like this. Your line cannot cross that brick wall. Those are called vertical asymptote lines. That's what it means, you all, when you can't use a 3 nor a or negative 3. Now, how do you determine what's going to go on in here? You have to plot some points. Just plot a couple of points. You'll start to see a picture of what it looks like. You can plot three or four points using the numbers in here. For example, 0. That's what? That's a minus what? One third. Zero is a minus a third. Right there. You can plot a couple more points. 
It may look like something like this, everybody. It could, or it could look like what? Something like this, it only comes up really close to that wall. Or it could be what? It could be something that comes down like this and then back up. Or it could look like this, it goes back down over here. Nobody see that? So we don't know until you do what? Until you plot some points. If you didn't know that there's something going on in here with the graph, what is what? It has to be either like this, or this, or like a U, or a big frowny face inside those two points. Nothing else can go on in there. Are we okay with that? So far, so good. Does that help you get a picture of what we're talking about when we say you must be able to determine the domain of your function? Because it's important to know what the function looks like, especially when it's what? A rational function like this. Now, let's suppose that we did something like this. Let's suppose that we change the problem just a slight bit. Maybe we would change it to where the function looks like this. Okay? Suppose it looked like that. Now look at this, everybody. This would then become what? Like this, right? This would become this. Look, look, take a look what happens to your problem. This now becomes what? Like this. Do you see this, everybody? <coughs> I don't care. I really don't care if someone in the numerator lent you a helping hand. And that's what they did, right? You can tell that they, a helping hand went to do this, right? You are still not allowed to use negative three you are still not allowed to use a negative three. But in what ways does the graph change? Because you could clearly see that the what? This is sort of canceled away, right? So let me show you what happens to your graph in this case. This all goes away. Everybody see this? At the minus three, because it got canceled away, there is not going to be a vertical asymptote line. You will not build a brick wall. So what does that happen? What does that make happen? The graph does something like this. Do you see what happens to the graph? There is a hole in the graph at minus three, not a vertical asymptote line. Why is there just a hole instead of a vertical asymptote line? Because somebody in the numerator lent you a helping hand to help you alleviate that what? That vertical asymptote line that used to be there. But just because it lent your hand still does not allow you to use a minus three. You see this, everybody? You better avoid a minus three with all your might. 
Because if you land on a monastery, you drop into that hole, and you're gone forever. <laughs> Nobody knows whatever happens to you. You're just, you're in some other dimension. So that's all I can say. Yes. We do uh, number fourteen. And this, what's the center point? That's that, isn't it? <clears throat> Anybody remember how to do this problem? This is the only thing you have to remember, you all. Where H and K is the center point. H and K. They gave you the center point. They actually gave you the center point. This is why. Now that, that's a giveaway. That's a giveaway. They may ask you to do what? Multiply that out. That's okay. Just go do it. Do you see how that works? How many of you see how that works? Do you see the x plus the x minus h squared plus y minus k squared? That is cut in stone. You cannot change that. You, you don't have the right to change that. Where h and k is the center points. Some of you looked a little puzzled. No, nobody's puzzled. Nobody's puzzled. Is everybody okay? You okay with that? You see how I got an X plus 2? Yes, sir. Anybody not know how I got an X plus 2? Right? Because this, this has to be like this. So if that's the case, then X minus... See that? That's the H, right? Look over there. I'll write it right here. You see that? That's the H. That becomes Y. This is Y. That's the K. Everybody see this? See how that happens? Now they ask you to do what? They may or may not ask you to do what? Put it in general form. This is called the standard form, right? But we need it in the general form. This becomes what? Just pick up the pieces and put all the pieces together. Like this goes together, always. And then you got a A plus 4x. You got a minus 14y. And let's pick up the pieces here. This is a 4. Oh, I, I know. Look, that's 40. That's 40. Ah, there you have it. You have the equation of the circle in general form, in case they ask for it, in general form.
How do you know that's a circle? You know that's a circle because of the x squared, y squared. And you know it's not the center of the circle because the, if the center was 0, 0, it would be 1. Like that. Well, the radius is 3. Like that. Or this would be what? Anybody not see this? That's what it's what? What its center is is 0, 0. Look. That point is 0, 0. This looks just like what? That, right? You all know what the bottom one means? What is the bottom one? What is the bottom one? <laughs> what is the bottom? Pythagorean theorem. It's Pythagorean's theorem. Uh, yeah. Well, guess what? Why does this look like Pythagorean's theorem? Because what do you think a circle is anyway? A circle is just a what? That's x, that's y, and that's the radius. That's a what? This is a what? This is a what? What is this? Triangles. Triangle, just an infinite number of triangles. That's all it is. Provided that the center is a zero, zero. That make, that make any sense at all? No? They ask you a question. How many of you can do this? What is that? It's an equation of a circle in general form. I want you to tell me what is the center point and what is the radius of that circle. I got four minutes, I can wait. Radius is five. Square root of five. Oh, no, no, sorry, just five. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, give it the center point and the radius. 
Okay, the center point is 2, 1, and the radius is 1. Guess again. Okay, the center point is definitely 2, 1. Guess again. Again, so. <laughs> that was wrong? Yes. I don't know the answer. I, 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 I'm not going to work it. <laughs> I'm not going to work it. Y'all work it. I just told you what it was. I know this is boring to some of you, but it's, it's, sometimes it's just a really. It's not boring to me. I'm not It's. Um, I, can't, I can't describe for you the, the feeling that you get sometimes when you. Uh, you do stuff. I mean, I do what I do because it really makes me giggle. <laughs> my son, my youngest son, brought home the neatest math problem the other night, and we worked on for about three hours. My whiteboard was completely filled, and he suddenly found the initial clue, and we solved it. And I'm still giggling about it, folks. <laughs> It's really something. It's just a, sometimes I giggle out loud. I don't know. I don't know anything to tell you other than whatever you do, find something in your life that will make you giggle all over again as a child. The first assistant in my class years ago was. I'd walk in the room and she was sitting at the desk cursing like a sailor every day. And I thought she was complaining about the homework assignments that I was giving. And I finally got the courage up to ask her one day, what, what are you, why are you cursing so much? And then she said, and I can't repeat what she said because it wouldn't be nice, because she she said it's this blank, 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 blank accounting class. <laughs> well, I was relieved because it's not my class. I thought she was complaining about my class, and I finally looked at her and I said, Whew, wow, that's. I said, what is your major? She says accounting. <laughs> and then I just lost it. I told her, get the. H-E double hockey stick out of my room right now and you get across the street and you change your major. Don't you dare sit for day after day after day and you're studying and preparing for something that you're going to do the rest of your life and you hate it. Don't do that. She did. She got up and went and changed her major came back and she was a happy camper for the rest of the semester. And whatever you do, 